भगवान शिवानंद I had to take my shoes out, otherwise you wouldn't see me. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Shivanandaya. The program director, Niritika Lakshman. I acknowledge the presence of Her Excellency, the High Commissioner of India, Srimati Ruchi Ganeshyam and her Deputy High Commissioner of India, Mr. Armstrong Chengson, the honor Honorable MEC for Agriculture of the KwaZulu Parliament, Nomkosi Siro Kaba, the Consul General of India, in, based in Durban, Mr. Raghunathan, His Holiness Sri Swami Premananda, the spiritual head of the Ramakrishna Dham, Sri Swami Nishalananda, the spiritual head of the Integral Yoga Center, which is an affiliated branch of the Divine Life Society headquarters based in Rishikesh in India. Padma Bhushan Sri Anup Jalota, Sri Viramani Kannan, Sri Ishwar Ram Lachman, the founder and director of the Shivananda Peace Pillar Project, Councillor Logi Naidu, the speaker for the Atirkweni municipality, Sri Ram Maharaj, the chairman and the president of the South African Hindu Dharma Sabha, and various heads of various spiritual institutions, and Mr. Seelan Archery, the chairperson of this venue, the Mariaman Temple of Mount Edgecombe, ladies and gentlemen. On this occasion of the 52nd Maha Samadhi, or death anniversary of His Holiness Sri Swami Shivananda, this lecture is the third lecture or the third Shivananda Memorial Lecture. I pay tribute to the words of my two predecessors, who were Swami Abedananda and Prince Magasutu Butilezi. Namaskar, Namaste, Vanakam. This is the traditional Hindu greeting, which translated means that I bow with folded palms to the divine seated within. The divine seated within each and every one of you present here. Swami Shivananda would greet you with the words, revered self. And in a few minutes, you will understand why. 
But first, a very brief biographical life sketch so that we can all know the depth of this dynamic saint. You've seen earlier the video presentation as to the personality of Swami Shivananda. Then we will go into his worldview, the heart of the matter, and search the deep philosophical base of all his actions. And at the end, we shall see how he translated it into visible action, even here in South Africa. Swami Shivananda was born as Kupuswami Ayer on the 8th of September in 18, 1887 in a little town called Pattamade in South India. This ex exceptionally bright and intelligent lad showed saintly tendencies even in his boyhood by his compassion for the suffering humanity and animals. After matriculating with honors, he was accepted to study medicine at the Tanjo Medical Institute. And while still a medical student, he started a popular health journal called Ambrosia. He later sought employment in Malaya, present-day Malaysia, at a hospital serving the workers in the rubber plantations. Here, he honed his skills in medicine and the service to ailing humanity. But in his reflections, he wrote, is there not a higher mission in life than the daily routine duties, eating and drinking? Is there no form of higher happiness and peace than all these transitory and illusory pleasures? How very insecure is existence on this earth plane with all kinds of fears, worries, anxieties, diseases, and disappointments. The world of names and forms is ever-changing. Time is fleeting, and all hopes of peace, happiness in this world end in pain, despair, and sorrow. There had to be something more. And after returning from Malaya, he didn't even enter his own home. He left on a spiritual journey that would ultimately take him to experience God, which is the goal of all human endeavor. After arriving in a small town of Rishikesh on the banks of the great river Ganges at the, at the foothills of the Himalaya mountains, he was inducted into the holy order of sannyas by his guru, Swami Vishwananda, and was now formally known as Swami Shivananda. His life was a life of poverty, celibacy, and service to mankind, and intense spiritual practice. Here he practiced severe austerities and prolonged periods of meditation. He served the sick monks and passing pilgrims by creating the Satya Sevashram dispensary, providing free treatments. It was here that the doors to higher spiritual realms opened, and these provided him with a solid base to open the Divine Life Society in 1936. Divine wisdom flowed from his pen and his lips, and his inspiring thoughts influenced people all over the world. Words describing his nature were, and I quote, having a sagely bearing, yet he was simple, childlike, respectful, loving, compassionate, optimistic, peaceful, serene, charitable. In fact, it was reported that, and I quote again, if love ever walked on earth in human garb, it could not excel Swami Shivananda in the self-giving compassion. It was love that had no thought for himself, but for everyone else. He rejoiced to give, to give his all, to give himself, and to give unasked. There was not a single thing that he would not give away without hesitation. He demonstrated practically that giving is the secret of abundance. And based on this, he started the Divine Life Society in 1936 and the Divine Life magazine in 1938, which reached all corners of the earth. Thereafter, he did many acts of compassion, and notably, he opened a bhajan hall, a bhajan hall and later the Vishwanath Mandir and the Sivananda Ayurvedic Pharmacy. He initiated the Sivananda Yoga Vedanta Forest Academy for the training of monks. 
He even started the Shivananda Art Studio. The Shivananda General Charitable Hospital, which he opened, provides free treatment even to this day, including the, eye, the Shivananda Eye Hospital. He held the World Parliament of Religions in 1953, and he brought together the major world religions to dialogue, to a dialogue to promote world peace. He consecrated the first Shivananda Peace Pillar in 1958, and he created countless other seva or service to mankind opportunities, including the creation of a leper colony and old age homes. In his lifetime, he wrote more than 300 books, magazines, articles on almost every aspect of the human condition. Ever inspiring, he ever goads us on, ever encouraging us onwards to that great goal of life, God realization. In South Africa, we hear the term Ubuntu. We proudly speak of Ubuntu as uniquely South African, but it has been used really used throughout Africa from the mid-1900s, and especially in the writings from Zimbabwe. What is Ubuntu? And let us examine this philosophy, described as a form of African humanism. According to Michael Onyabuchi Eze, the core of Ubuntu can best be summarized as follows. A person is a person through other people and it strikes an aff affirmation of one's humanity through recognition of an other in his or her uniqueness and difference. The Liberian peace activist, Lema Gobue, defined Ubuntu as, I am what I am because of who we all are. And Ubuntu speaks particularly about the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about our interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself when you have this quality, Ubuntu. When you have this quality, you are known for your generosity. Ubuntu is not meant to be practiced in isolation in any one particular geographic area or by one language group or culture or in one state or in one continent, or by one religious group. It is a worldview that makes the entire world its beneficiaries. Here in KwaZulu-Natal, my king, King Goodwill Zwelatini, the king of the Zulu nation, must make this call to all of us. We are all his subjects, no matter where in the world we come from. Let him teach us about Ubuntu. Let him lead by example. Similarly, Swami Shivananda saw the world with a vision expanded by deep meditation and spiritual practice. Swami Shivananda saw the world through the eyes of a Moses who saw the burning bush on Mount Horeb, of a Buddha achieving nirvana under a Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya, and Prophet Muhammad having the vision of Angel Gabriel. Swami Shivananda accepted a worldview of total universality in the form of Vedanta, which teaches that the one transcendent conscious entity that we call Brahman is the sole reality and the matrix of the cosmos. It cannot be said to possess any attributes whatsoever. The illusory power of Brahman, which is called Maya, causes the world. And ignorance of this reality is the cause of suffering in this world. And only upon the true knowledge of Brahman can liberation be attained. When a person tries to know Brahman through his mind, due to the influence of Maya, Brahman appears as a god that we call Ishvara, separate from the world, but from the, and not separate from the world and from the individual. In reality, there is no difference between the individual soul and Brahman. Liberation lies in knowing this reality. The heart of Shivananda, of Swami Shivananda, beat to the rhythm of the, these four Mahavakyas, or the greatest fundamental truth sayings of the cosmos. From the pen of Swami Shivananda himself, this is what he understood and he penned as a poem. I quote, I am the all. I am all in all. 
There is nothing besides myself. I am the soul of the universe, or Vishva Atma. I am the self in all beings, the Antar Atma. I am the warp and the woof of all. I alone really exist. I am here, I am there, I am now, I was, and I will be forever. There is neither distance nor space in me. I am the ocean of existence. A drop fell from me and it became the universe. My effulgence shines in the form of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, and Vyasa, and the other rishis. My essential nature is amazingly wonderful, unquote, wrote Shivananda. Living in this reality, in seeing suffering, in seeing the suffering humanity, he suffered. In seeing an animal in pain, it was his own pain. In seeing hunger, it was his own pangs that gnawed into his very being. If he had anything, it was never solely his. It belonged to the universe and could easily be given away. Swami Shivananda lived in this reality. And in its simplest form, you would now see the truth in his traditional greeting, revered self. Or in the traditional Hindu greeting of namaste or namaskar. Arising from this firm philosophical base and at the heart of every human virtue is this reality that Swami Shivananda lived. Be good, do good, be kind, be compassionate, inquire, who am I? Know thyself and be free, sums up Swami Shivananda. There was a particular charm felt by everyone who came into, into contact with Swami Shivananda. They were immediately at ease and felt instantly elevated in his presence. He inspired people not by words alone, but by his actions. In South Africa, Swami Sahajananda was so inspired that he agreed to open a branch of the Divine Life Society to enliven the teachings of Swami Shivananda and through a massive printing press, spread the universal wisdom teachings and in the heat of the apartheid era, started an unprecedented campaign of poor relief for our own African brothers and sisters. Some 300 multi-million rand education and health projects were funded and built from 1974 until his death in 2007. The Prince of the Zulu Nation, the Honorable Dr. Mangusutu Butilezi, facilitated most of these projects for his people, our people. Schools, clinics, hospitals, peace centers, baptismal centers, colleges, old age homes, hydroponic agricultural projects, mass housing projects, feeding schemes, clothing distribution, printing presses, scholarships, sewing schools, arts, craft centers were funded and built for the poor African communities in the name of Swami Shivananda. Similarly, it was a feeling of oneness and identifying our own inner beings with those who were suffering that major Hindu institutions were guided to create their own seva projects. And since 1974, it was estimated that Hindu institutions spent more than 51 billion rands towards alleviating suffering in the African communities, especially during the apartheid era. In South Africa, the affiliates of the master's institutions continue his work in the purest monastic tradition. His teachings were, his teachings that work is worship, service to man is worship of God, is brought to life, by the integral yoga of Swami Shivananda. Swami Nishtalananda, Swami Ramkripananda, Swami Ishwarmayananda, Swami Parvati Ananda, Swami Shivashankarananda, Swami Vidyananda are the worthy flag bearers of the master's expanded vision in South Africa. Here is the secret of karma yoga from the pen of Swami Shivananda. I quote, all forms are forms of the Lord. The Lord does all actions through the instrument of man. As each deserves, the Lord is very just and impartial. Why do you judge then the men as good or bad? Consider all the actions to be the Lord's own and become wise. No atom, no leaf can move without the sanction of the Lord. Feel this always and remove egoism. No action will bind you, O Ram. 
This is the secret of karma yoga, unquote, wrote Swami Shivananda. In conclusion, we talk about that every ordinary citizen was enthused by the truth of this worldview and prompted to do extraordinary acts of kindness. Take our host, Ishwar Ram Lachman, for example. At this young and tender age, he was inspired by Swami Shivananda not only to host this event, but he has, on his own volition, built houses for the homeless, started a walking stick project to assist the elderly, started and funded agricultural self-help gardens, started feeding schemes, computer training centers, built community halls in disadvantaged communities, promoted the Shivananda peace pillars at heritage sites, promoted interfaith programs, especially with the Nazareth Baptist Church, funded scholarships for needy gifted students, promoted good race relations in association with the Zulu royal household. He holds a position on the board of the Ingunyama Trust. He has disseminated spiritual literature, promoted Indian culture in association with the Indian High Commission, and with the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, or GOPIO, promoted good relations between South Africa and India, and even worked voluntarily on nature conservation projects with the Ezemvelo Wildlife Trust. And with characteristic humility, he thanks the Divine and Swami Shivananda for the opportunity to serve his people. Such is the power of Swami Shivananda. In this talk, we have given a brief glimpse of a thoroughly modern saint, Swami Shivananda, a dynamic powerhouse who achieved so much in his lifetime that many would have taken many lifetimes to achieve. We showed how he translated a worldview called Vedanta, which is a transcendental spiritual humanism into a practical and inspiring life. And finally, we showed how the truth that he discovered and taught found many million, millions of adherents around the world that has even touched us and touched our lives right here in South Africa. I thank you. Om Tatsat. <laughs>